علی شراب میگه ان شاء الله اعوذ بالله من الشیطان الرجیم بسم الله الرحمن الرحیم ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا واشهد ان لا اله الا الله واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وسلم اما بعد Och det ger bara sig att säga, Åh, det vill jag inte köpa av energi. Vi ser verkligen att Allah skulle ha kommit till Allah. Det är först, men väldigt mycket är att han går om vi. Det är bara en del av mankind, och vi ser till det som sådant. Och det ger bara sig, Bismillah, i Rahman, i Rahim. In the name of Allah, the most merciful, the most merciful. Truly and verily, all praise is due to Allah. We praise Him and seek only His help with forgiveness. And we also see verkligen att Allah skulle ha kommit till Allah från de här nafs, som är för de desires. For verily Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that the nafs, your carnal desires, it is inclined to do so, it is inclined to do evil except by the wrath of Allah. We also see verse of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from the Sayyidi of Marina. Those deeds and those actions that are not sent by Allah in the Quran, and those deeds and those actions that are not sent by the Prophet Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and the Sunnah. Those from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to be guided to Islam, nobody can even destroy. And those from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to be misguided up the Surah of the Mustafeen, no one can guide. We bear witness that there is no God but Allah, the one God who has no partners. And we bear witness that Muhammad gave up Allah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, is the slave of his messenger, Amma Allah. The Prophet Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, said the very best speech, the best hadith, is the speech of Allah in the Quran. And the best guidance, the best hadith, is the guidance of the Prophet Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, in the Sunnah. And the worst of all matters are those things that are innovated by the people pertaining to this deed. For all innovation is to Bida, all Bida is to Yadala, which is going up the Surah of the and all Yadala is in the north, which is the fire. So we see person of Allah Allah from that north, from that fire. Oh Allah, give us good in this life, Hasana. Oh Allah, give us good in the next life, Hasana. Wakina, Adamana, and oh Allah, save us from the punishment of the fire, Ya Allah. Ameen. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen, Allah gave us another opportunity of a Ta'aleen. Allah gives another opportunity of gaining knowledge of this deed. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen. And the Prophet Muhammad said that those who strive to obtain knowledge, Allah will make your tariqah jannah, he'll make it easy for you. Those who strive to obtain knowledge, Allah will make your path to paradise easy for you. The whole time that you're striving to acquire knowledge, knowledge of this deed, knowledge of Allah, knowledge of the Prophet Muhammad knowledge of your Aqidah, Knowledge of the understanding of Islam. The whole time that you're striving to acquire knowledge, the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu said, you're like a mujahid on the battlefield. You're at war. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen. And inshallah, you get the ajr. You get the reward as if you're on the battlefield, like a mujahid on the battlefield. And we're also told in the hadith for the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, because we want to put emphasis on learning. We want to put emphasis on gaining knowledge with regard to this deen. The Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi said that those who gather together for the dhikr of Allah, those who gather together for the remembrance of Allah, whether it's Quran, Hadith, Tafsir, whatever it may be, stories of the Sahabs, that the angels will make dua for us and make a stafa for us, ask for forgiveness of us, inshallah. They will make dua to Allah, for Allah forgive us of our sins and enter us into the Jannah. Oh Allah, forgive them of their sins and enter them into the Jannah. So inshallah, we want this dua, we want this ajr from Allah for the law, we want this dua from the malaika, inshallah, ameen. Why do we strive to attain knowledge? We strive to attain knowledge to memorize that knowledge. We strive to attain knowledge to implement that knowledge, right? Not just learn the knowledge, forget about that knowledge. No, we strive to learn the knowledge, memorize that knowledge, implement that knowledge, put it into practice, put it into our everyday life, so thus it becomes a part of us. And then after we implement it, put it into our lives, practice it, then we share it with others, inshallah. Each one teach one. Today, inshallah, we'll talk about Yusuf alayhi salam. Today, inshallah, we're gonna talk about the Prophet Yusuf alayhi salam. In the cookbook, we talked about Yusuf alayhi salam because we talked about that this dunya is a sigil for the mu'min. And we talked about the statement of Yusuf alayhi salam where he said that prison is more dearer to me than that which they called me to. So what was the story of Yusuf alayhi salam? So today, inshallah, we're going to talk about 
one of the favorite prophets of Allah, which was Yusuf or as we say in English, the prophet Joseph. So let's get to it, inshallah. First and foremost, we must understand that the prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi said that Yusuf had the best lineage of anybody on earth. The prophet Yusuf had the best lineage of anybody on earth. What is his lineage? It's Yusuf, Ibn Yaqub, Ibn Ishaq, Ibn Ibrahim. What does that mean? That means Joseph, or Yusuf, the son of Ya'atul, which is Jacob, which is the son of Ishaq, which is Isaac, which is the son of Ibrahim. So the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said with the cross of Yusuf Alayhi Salaam, he is a prophet who is the son of a prophet, who is the son of a prophet, who is the son of a prophet, which is Ibrahim Alayhi Salaam, Khalid Allah, the friend of Allah. So the Prophet Yusuf Alayhi Salaam had the best lineage of anybody else's lineage. He was a prophet who was the son of a prophet, who was the son of a prophet, who was also the son of a prophet. So four lineage, four generations of prophethood from Yusuf alayhi salam, the best lineage. So the prophet Yusuf alayhi salam, which was Joseph, he was the son of Jacob, right, or Yaqub. And you know that Jacob, or another name for Jacob is Israel, Allah changed the name of Jacob to Israel. So we say, Bani Israel, O children of Israel, which means the children of Jacob. Okay? So Yusuf and Islam was from those 12 tribes, or from the 12 sons, right, of Yaqub and Islam of Israel. So we're talking about Bani Israel, or we're talking about the sons of Israel. That means we're talking about the sons of Yaqub or the sons of Jacob. Jacob had 12 sons. One of those 12 sons was Yusuf alayhi salam. One of the 12 sons of Jacob, one of the 12 sons of Israel was Yusuf alayhi salam. Okay? So we're talking about Bay Israel. We're talking about the children of Israel. Right? We're talking about the 12 sons of Jacob, the 12 sons of Yaqub, the 12 sons of Israel. Okay? So Yusuf alayhi salam was the son of Yaqub alayhi salam, which was Jacob. And Jacob was the son of Ishaq. And in English, Ishaq is Isaac. Ishaq is the prophet Isaac. Okay? Ishaq is the prophet Isaac. The prophet Isaac is the son of Ibrahim alayhi salam, which, is, which means Abraham in English. So Ishaq or Isaac is the son of Ibrahim alayhi salam, or we should say, Abraham, alayhi salam, peace and blessings be upon him, <coughs> who was the Khalil Allah. Abraham was the friend of Allah. Okay? So, Yusuf alayhi salam, he had the best lineage. So we're talking about Yusuf alayhi salam. And he had the best lineage. Okay? Yusuf alayhi salam was the son of Yaqub, which was the son of Isaac, which was the son of Ibrahim. And we know that Ibrahim had many sons. Ibrahim had many sons. Ishaq, which is the son of Ibrahim alayhi salam, was the second born of Ibrahim alayhi salam. Was the second born of Ibrahim alayhi salam. So we're talking about Ibrahim alayhi salam, which this lineage goes all the way back to Ibrahim alayhi salam. Ibrahim alayhi salam, he had three wives. One, two, three. Ibrahim alayhi salam had three wives. And again, we're going through this lineage, we're going through this history, we're going through this knowledge, so that inshallah we can understand what it is that we believe in. Inshallah we can get a visual of what it is that we believe in, have a proper understanding of what it is that we believe in. Maybe we didn't know what it is that we believe in. We're supposed to believe in all the prophets. Allah says, La da fabraku bayna ahadim miya rusuli. We do not make any distinction between the prophets. We love all the prophets. We love all the messengers. So we're talking about Ibrahim alayhi salam. So Ibrahim alayhi salam, which we get the miller from, we get the example from, Allah says we follow the miller of Ibrahim Hanifa, the Hanifa, the Muslim, the originator of monotheism. Right? So we follow the miller of Ibrahim alayhi salam. We Muslims follow the religion of Ibrahim. We say that the religion of Ibrahim was Islam. We say that the religion of all the prophets was Islam. Total submission to the will and commandment of Allah, which we'll get into another day. 
Now we're talking about the lineage of Yusuf alayhi salam, who had the best lineage. So Ibrahim alayhi salam, he had three wives. The first wife that Ibrahim alayhi salam had was the wife Sarah. Sarah or Sarah. And Sarah was from the Shemite lineage, which we're going to get into in a minute. Sarah was from the Shemite lineage. The second wife of Ibrahim alayhi salam was Hajar, and Hajar was from the Hamite lineage. Hajar was from the Hamite lineage. Okay? So Sarah was from the Shemite lineage. Hajar was from the Hamite lineage. And we're told about Katara that she was of the Canaanites in some emphasis or some books. We're taught in Katara, or Katara, that was she was from the Canaanite lineage. And the Canaanites also come from the Hamite lineage. And we're going to explain that in a minute, inshallah. So Ibrahim alayhi salam had three wives. Ibrahim alayhi salam had three wives. This is the reality of the Muslim. We don't care about the other realities or what the other religions say what their books say, we believe that the Prophet Ibrahim salam had three wives. His first wife was Sarah. She couldn't become pregnant. So therefore, after that, he married Hajar, who was an Egyptian. She was a Kushite. She was from the Hamite lineage. Then after that, he married Katara, which is also from the Hamite lineage. So let's go into the Hamite, the Shemite lineage. We're told in a hadith by Tawari, narrated by Ibn Abbas, Ibn and again we're using evidence from the Quran and the Sunnah of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, where we use tafsir, right, for the Islamic scholars to voice our opinion, to prove our points. So as Muslims, we use Daniel with anything that we talk about. This is the part of our idea. This is the part of our belief system. If it wasn't important, then the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam wouldn't have talked about it. If it wasn't important, the Sahabas wouldn't have talked about it. So let's see what Ibn Abbas put it on, he says. Ibn Abbas put it on, he said, Born to Noah were three sons. Born to Noah was Shem, whose descendants' color were black in complexion, dark black, dark black in complexion, but light brownish undertone and dark blackish brown. And the word that he uses, Udama. So Ibn Abbas, he said that Noah had a son, and that son, the son's name was Shem. And these descendants, their color, and this is from Ibn Abbas, he said that the complexion was black, dark black in complexion, but light brown undertone, a dark blackish brown. The word that they use is Udama. He said he also had a son whose name was Ham. So these are the three sons of Noah. And this is from the statement of Ibn Abbas, but the Ad, we understand who Ibn Abbas was. The Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam made dua for Ibn Abbas to give him an understanding of the Quran. So we're talking about Ibn Abbas, we're talking about the Tafsir. Ibn Abbas is the champion of the Tafsir. So Ibn Abbas says in this hadith, or in this narration, that Noah had a son named Shem, and his son Shem, from the descendants of Shem, they had a dark black complexion with a light brown undertone. He had another son whose name was Ham, and he also had a dark black complexion, and some of them had a light brownish undertone. Right? Then he said he had another son and his name was Jephthah, whose descendants are very fair-skinned, olive-skinned, and use the word humrah or the word red. The word red in Arabic or ahmar depicts anything that is white. In the Arabic language, they use different names for different colors. For instance, in the Arabic language, they might say that somebody is white, Bengal. But when they use the word Bengal or white, it doesn't mean that that person is white. It means that they're black-skinned with no blemishes. It means that they're black-skinned with noble characters. So you might read a hadith where it said that somebody was white, 
But in the Arabic language, in order to describe somebody that was white or light-skinned or pale-skinned, the word that they use is Ahmad, which is red. Okay? So we're talking this hadith. We're talking this tafsir. They're written by Ibn Abbas, and this is in the book of Tabari, that Noah was born three sons. One of the sons' name was Shem, whose descendants were black in color. Some of them were dark brown, right? Some of them were dark black as with a brown undertone, and the word that he uses is Udama, which means dark black. So the people of Shem, these people were dark black. These people were dark brown, right? So we're talking about the Shemites, and we're talking about those who claim to be Hebrews, or which we're gonna find out right now, those who are Arabs, the original Hebrews, the original Arabs, those who come from the lineage of Shem, as stated by Ibn Abbas, Ibn Al-An, their true color was dark black, white or black with a brownish undertone. So the true Shemites, the true Hebrews, the original Arabs were dark black, white or dark brown. So Ibn Abbas said, Shem, whose descendants of color was dark in complexion, with a light brownish undertone, and a dark blackish brown, Udama. The descendants of Ham, their color was a true black, or Aswad, or Sawad. And Udama, meaning they were dark, dark black, jet black. And Udama, also using the same word that he used for the people of Shem, that they were Udama, few or black complexion with light skin, light brown overtone, light brown undertone. And Japheth, who are the descendants, whose descendants are very fair skin and olive skin. So Shem and Ham, these two brothers, or the descendants of these two brothers, they were dark skin, black, or brown, dark brown. Those who came from Japheth, these are where the people that were red or the people that were white or olive color. Right? This is the statement of Ibn Abbas, Ibn Al-Aan. Okay? Imam Ahmed said in the Hadith, Imam Ahmed narrated in the Hadith, he said that the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, said that Shem was the father of the Arabs. So the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, said that Shem was the father of the Arabs. And we're talking about the descendants of Shem, they were dark skinned, they were black. Okay? There's many evidences to prove that the natural Arabs, the original Arabs who come from the lineage of Shem, they were dark skinned. The original Arabs were black skinned and dark skinned. Udama, Shadido, Adam, Adlau, right? They were very dark skinned in color. Many of the Sahabas, some that were from Quraysh, were dark skinned. Even from the Ahlul Bayt, those from the lineage of Hassan, those from the lineage of Ali ibn al Al, they were dark skinned, black. Okay, this is a fact. Okay. So Imam Ahmed, he states that the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, said, Shem was the father of the Arabs. And again, the description of the people of Shem were dark skinned, black, or dark brown. And the Arabs come from the lineage of Shem. Ham was the father of the Ethiopians, the Berbers, and the people of Sin. So the Ham, the descendants of Ham were the Ethiopians, the Berbers, and the people of Sin. The people of Sin were the people of Pakistan or India. Pakistan or India. So they also come from the Hamite lineage, the dark skinned lineage. Those who are the original, people, the original Hindus or the original Indians, those are the Dravidians. You go to the original uh, Hindus, the original uh, Indians, the original people of Pakistan, they are very dark skinned and they come from the lineage of Ham. This is the statement of the Prophet Muhammad, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, narrated by Imam Ahmed. So again, 